Why did an advanced warplane once dubbed the Rafale of the East end up as the last showpiece of the Soviet aviation industry? At the 1991 Dubai Air Show, an avant-garde metal model triggered the collective attention of Western observers, a new warplane numbered Su-37. With its unique duct-type aerodynamic layout and streamlined fuselage, was strikingly similar to the design concept of the Rafale secretly developed by Francis Dassault Aviation. Rafale, which was secretly developed by the French company Dassault Aviation, has a strikingly similar design concept. Just when the world was speculating that the Soviet Union was about to launch a new revolution in aviation technology, the Red Empire collapsed at the end of the same year, and along with it, this work which coalesced the last ambitions of the Soviet aviation industry was forever immortalized in the form of a model for an airshow. In the late 1980s, the Soviet Air Force gradually discovered the shortcomings of the MiG-29 after it entered service, with its insufficient combat radius and weak multi-mission capability. Faced with the dual pressure of the American F-15 and F-16 fleet and the European EF-2000 and other fourth-generation aircraft, the Kremlin secretly launched the Future Light Tactical Fighter program in 1988, the MiG-1.44, proposed by the Mycoin Design Bureau, and the S-37 by the Sukhoi Design Bureau competed fiercely, with Sukhoi eventually winning the competition with a more pragmatic design. The single-engine, close-coupled duckwing and delta-wing configuration demonstrated amazing transonic maneuverability in wind tunnel tests at the Central Institute of Fluid Mechanics, with a theoretical maximum instantaneous angular velocity of 35 degrees per second, far exceeding that of similar Western aircraft at the time. In April 1991, when Western intelligence officers first photographed a full-size model of the Su-37 at the periphery of the Zhukovsky Test Flight Center, the fighter had complete technical parameters, 17.2-meter-long fuselage, 11.5-meter wingspan, an installation of our 79M300H vectoring engine newly developed by Rurika Design Bureau, with a maximum accelerated thrust of 185 kN, and with a full authority digital telemetry system, it could theoretically achieve the COBRA maneuver. With the full access digital transmission system, it can theoretically achieve the COBRA maneuver level of ultra-mobility performance. The weapon system design was even more advanced. In addition to the conventional 30 mm gun, the fuselage was distributed with 17 mounting points, five of which were heavy-duty mounting points, which could carry your 77 medium-range air-to-air missiles and KH-31 anti-radiation missiles, which had just completed testing at that time. The specially designed wing root conformal fuel tanks gave it a combat radius of 1,300 kilometers, an increase of nearly 70% over the MiG-29. Just as the Sukhoi Design Bureau was preparing to build the first prototype, the shockwave of the Soviet Union's collapse changed the program's fate forever at the 1992 Moscow Air Show. Russian engineers showed the Chinese delegation the complete design of the Su-37, and the Russians involved in the negotiations recalled that the Chinese experts were interested in the duct-type layout, but ultimately opted to continue to improve the prototype of the J-10 due to concerns about the maturity of the technology. The Indian Air Force IAF, delegation preferred the twin-engine Su-30MKI which was considered more suitable for the subcontinental combat environment. The project, which could have rewritten the world's aeronautical landscape, was in a complete stalemate. Russia's defense budget plummeted from 280 billion rubles in 1991 to 4.7 billion rubles in 1993, and even maintaining the current fleet of aircraft was overstretched, let alone investing in the research and development of new fighters. History is full of dramatic coincidences. In the same year that the Su-37 program was frozen, the French Rafale prototype completed its maiden flight. Five years later, China's Chengdu Aircraft Company's J-10-1001 prototype broke through the clouds, and in 2003, Sweden's James 39C began to enter into service in large numbers. These four-and-a-half-generation fighters, which eventually came to fruition, showed a striking convergence with the aborted Su-37 in terms of aerodynamic layout and avionics architecture. Sukhoi chief designer Simonov lamented in his later years, we were at least three years ahead of Dassault, but history didn't give us three years. What is even more saddening is that in 1996, when Russia reintroduced the Su-37 designation, the name had already been given to the Su-27M's deeply improved version, and the original light fighter full of revolutionary design disappeared forever in the long river of history. From the perspective of technological inheritance, the legacy of the Su-37 has not been completely annihilated. Its wing-body fusion design idea was continued on the MiG-1.44 demonstrator, 
and the core technology of the R79 engine later derived from the L31F in series, which became the art of China's J10 fighter jet. The metal model, which caused shock at the Dubai Air Show, is now quietly displayed in the corner of the Central Air Force Museum in Moscow, together with the wreckage of the N225 transport plane and the drawings of the Alyanovsk aircraft carrier, telling the story of the end of an era. When people marveled at the J20 at the Zhuhai Air Show, they probably shouldn't forget that in the history of human aviation. There was once a war eagle from the north that was just one step away from rewriting history. If you analyze the fall of the Su-37 in depth, you must expand your vision to the structural contradictions of the entire Soviet aviation industrial system. At its peak, this behemoth had 52 design bureaus, 189 research institutes, and nearly 300 supporting factories, but was plagued by internal friction due to the mismatch of resources in the planned economy. The Sukhoi Design Bureau had a bitter conflict with the instrumentation department over the overweight of electronic equipment during the development of the Su-27, and such departmental barriers are even more pronounced in the Su-37 program. The Leolika Design Bureau has delayed the delivery of its promised vectoring engine due to lack of funds. The Fazatron Radar Research Institute is lagging behind in the development of a new phased array radar, and the Leningrad Institute, which is in charge of the flight control system, has been forced to develop a new radar that is not compatible with the Su-27. The Leningrad Electronic Machinery Plant, which is responsible for the flight control system, even stopped purchasing chips due to the ruble's devaluation. Western military observers have analyzed satellite photographs to show that the semi-finished Su-37 prototype parked at the Novosibirsk Aviation Plant in 1992 was significantly better than the MiG-29 of the same period. The fuselage was made of large area composite materials. The articulated mechanism of the leading edge maneuvering flaps demonstrated precision machining, and the curved windshield of the cockpit cover was made using the then rare monolithic molding technology. These details corroborate Simonov's description in his memoirs. We prepared 21st century technology for the Su-37, but it only fit in a 20th century frame. More intriguingly, the aircraft's pre-programmed mode of operation was already showing the characteristics of information-based warfare. With its data chain system designed to be compatible with ground-based air defense networks, a revolutionary breakthrough in 1991, dramatic changes in the geopolitical landscape dealt a fatal blow to the program. With the dissolution of the Warsaw Pact, the Eastern European countries that had originally planned to purchase the Su-37 collectively turned to NATO, and the Bulgarian Air Force even switched its order deposit to the French Rafale. A last-ditch effort by the Russian authorities in 1993 also suffered a setback when the Russians took a model of the Su-37 to the Middle East to sell it. The Saudi defense minister pointed to the KH-31 missile mount in the belly of the model and said bluntly, what should be mounted here are Western-style precision-guided weapons. This detail exposed the deep dilemma of incompatibility between the Soviet weapons system and Western standards, and also foreshadowed the fate of Russian-made weapons in the international arms trade market. Looking back at this history, the tragedy of the Su-37 lies not only in the technical abortion, but also in the paradox of the times that it reflects. When Francis Dassault with Rafale fighter took Egypt, Qatar and other countries' orders, few people noticed that these customers were originally the traditional buyers of Soviet weapons. When China's aerospace industry threw the digestion of the Su-27 technology to achieve leapfrog development, the Russian engineers are still looking for sales for the improvement of the L-31 engine. The aviation empire that once stood alongside the United States during the Cold War eventually lost the jewel in its technological crown to the dust of history due to institutional rigidity and economic collapse. In 2017, when the Su-57 prototype trailed an orange-red tail flame across the sky outside Moscow, the old engineers on the observation platform could not help but wet their eyes. This highly anticipated fifth-generation aircraft, its aerodynamic design can vaguely be seen when the charm of the Su-37. Only this time, the Russians used a full 26 years to complete that unfinished voyage. Miles away in Zhuhai, China, the J-10B vectoring demonstrator is stunning the world with the Pugachev Cobra maneuver, a classic flight maneuver from the Soviet era, which seems to be a tribute across time and space, telling a sobering story in aviation history.